Howdy, Internet. Um, okay, so I put up the long, the 19-minute video about the new, like, hip concept. Um, I have been told by people I trust more than myself that I need to do a shorter version of that, like, inside five minutes and make it polished and condensed. Totally agree. Um, however, in the interest of time, here is a spitballed version of that and kind of the second layer of stuff that I'm coming to understand about how this new hip model works basically so a lot of people end up driving off of this rear leg too much i'll even try to be in frame driving off of the rear leg too much and leaving the rear leg pointed south on the t-pad pointed away from your target so I'm, my target is here i'm throwing into the wall if i leave this leg here when i go to throw it's in the way. My hip is trying to rotate forward. My shoulder is trying to rotate forward. We're trying to get this, but this leg is dead weight behind me. It's in a not athletic position. It's probably scooping off the ground in a way that isn't driving, right? I want these to be going forward or they're going to feel like they're going forward. With the leg backwards, I can't do that. So the arm equivalent of this is if I put my, I'm throwing this way, if I put my arm back here and leave it there and go to throw, this, this is going to slow me down. It's going to act like a rudder and have a bunch of momentum that I have to overcome, a bunch of mass that I have to get in motion. So if I go to throw here, this is going to slow me down. I want this inside of the rotation so that I can spin fast, right? I wanna pull everything in. It's the same exact thing with your leg. So if I'm throwing that way, if I drive off of this leg too far and I leave this behind me, I go to spin my hips and I can't spin my hips because that's in the way. If I get this inside of the rotation, now I can snap my hips all of a sudden. So we're shutting down any possibility of activating the hips when we leave this leg behind us, it, it feels powerful because you're driving off of it the whole time, but that does not matter. You do not need drive. You need everything to get tight in the rotation. So throwing towards the camera, my axis of rotation here is my spine <clears throat> and it doesn't really move during the throw. Throwing that way again, if I take a big step backwards, get leaned over here and then step forward, I have to move my spine to get to my throw. That's not going to work. The spine has to be still and only rotate. That's how you get speed and snap in the throw. In order for that to happen, my leg has to be on that line. My axis of rotation is here, and everything is just going to spin on that axis. If I take my leg and put it the heck back here, I can't. Physically, I can't spin, and if I do spin, it's going to be slow because I'm in this big, huge cartwheel shape, right? doesn't make any sense. So we really need to redefine our release position and redefine our swing plane in general, right? So this is my problem with Torley Bird 2.0. I was silent about this for a long time, but the truth is coming out. If you're here swinging and you go hard, you're going to pop up because you haven't actually defined that swing plane yet. The missing piece that defines a swing plane is getting your rear leg on the axis of rotation, like physically on the axis of rotation. Now I can go as hard as I want to, and I can end in balance. It would be better if I could keep my rear leg straight and my front leg straight and keep everything strong. So th this is what's missing. Like I was just at the park watching people throw and nobody gets that. Like people that throw 450 plus usually get it, but everyone else is walking up nice and slow and then taking a big, huge offset to get some kind of balance, but they're hurting their power and making their throw too round by taking too big of an offset. Or they're just stepping straight and plowing around way too fast. You have to commit to the idea of a lateral hip shift so to do a, a super fast progression, this is step one. I'm going to jump sideways and stop, right? That's the first model of a brace. My hips are moving laterally. 
my leg is stopping that lateral motion and reversing it. <clears throat> then to get to where we want to be, you're going to offset, throwing towards the camera now, you're going to offset your hip shift a little tiny bit right. You're going to offset your plant foot a little tiny bit left. So if I was going dead flat with those, it would be here. If I send my foot a little bit toe side and my hip a little bit heel side, you start to get that. That's a crumple zone, right? So I'm shifting laterally, but getting my foot, the vector from my leg is now going a little bit behind me. And my hip is going a little bit forward of that. So then all of a sudden, instead of a complete stop with no rotation, I get a stop with rotation. And then I can add to that by allowing the rear leg to go even further. Now all of a sudden, I get a ton of power, especially if I can keep my arm loose, keep my elbow up, hold my space in the front of my shoulder, get some separation between my hips going and my shoulders going, and then remember to put my hit at 10 instead of at 12. I can get an insane amount of snap from a one step. And that's all you need is to be able to end dynamically in that position, not, not dynamically, statically, but you're dynamically making your hips crumple into this position, tilted axis, leg on the tilted axis, shoulder plane defining the swing plane. That's all you need. Go forth and huck.